what we're going to do uh, if you'd like to like this video and subscribe um, we are just starting out on this YouTube channel but what we're going to do is um, stunt this motorbike we're going to do all the modifications to it we're going to uh, de-link the brakes we're going to change the uh, we're going to change the number plate holder put a tail tidy on it which we'll probably make ourselves we've got new handlebar levers short levers coming for it we've got handlebar guards coming for it uh, we've ordered knobblies for it we're waiting for them to say we're going to de-link that try and put the original exhaust back on it as i don't like this carbon one down here i like the original one um follow our sort of journey on um modifying this tnt 125 um and learning how to um stunt it properly you know low speed wheelies stoppies all that sort of stuff um so if you'd like to please subscribe and like this video and there'll be updates as soon as i uh, we'll continue to update hopefully fairly regularly but we'll do updates um as we do everything else um so i'm going to start on with the project today look at the rear brake first uh, you can see got two banjos here one goes to the rear brake and one goes off to the uh, combined braking system module which is the other side i'll show you that in a second um, and then obviously still this side as well down at the front caliper um, it's three pistons um, this pipe here is from the front brake lever which controls these two outer pistons and then what happens is when you put your foot on the rear brake it goes through the combined braking system uh, limiting valve and it comes down this pipe and pushes the middle cylinder onto the disc so that's how you get the combined braking um, so obviously we're going to um, disconnect all this and then what we should do is put a double banjo on this one here um, from the front brake and have a little loop nice neat little loop if we can with braided hose which we'll make in the house ourselves um, and what we'll do is um, have that pipe joined to this pipe so we'll have all three all three pistons working on the uh, front brake lever um, and then on the rear we just have if we go back to the rear we just have this bottom one here going off then just keeping it in the same route um, so we need a single banjo bolt to go here but I'm pretty sure in between stripping everything off the front and to the beer, rear, sorry, we will have one of these bolts without having to order anything. Um, so that will be that, and I will show you how we disconnect it and drain the system. Right, it's quite difficult to see, but um, in there, bolted on these two brackets here, is the, that is the combined braking system with a adjustment bolt just here, so I think you can adjust it. Rear comes from the brake master cylinder, front one goes to the brake caliper. Um, now obviously we're going to disconnect all that, take all that off and we've got a spare banjo bolt there we can use for the rear caliper. Also just a quick note before we actually strip anything, um, as you can see we've got two brake reservoirs here for the braking system. Um, this one here is the rear brake one so we'll be keeping that. This one here is the combined braking system. Right so first things first we're going to try and drain the system. So. Uh, the bottom pipe is the rear uh, middle cylinder, uh, middle piston, sorry. So this pipe here is the one from the link brake system. So we're going to undo that and drain the fluid out of there to initially. Which will help drain the system. And then initially... Um, we'll probably blank this off so we can still use the bike once I've worked out what um, things I need. So this banjo bolt here, which is a nice uh, single flare one, a uh, single banjo one, we shall use that for converting the rear master cylinder to uh, the correct fittings. Right, as I've said before, um, there's two on here. Um, we only need this bottom one, because the bottom one here on this double banjo setup, the bottom one goes to the rear caliper, top one goes off to the link brake system. So all we're going to do is um, use the bolt from the front caliper, um, whip this bolt out, do away with that pipe, and just bolt this one back in. Then the back would be ready for bleeding again. But obviously we do have to top it up with the uh, fluid, because it will lose a bit of fluid. So. Um, there's a drain tray under it which you can't really see at the moment but um, I'll try and just do this quite quickly without losing too much fluid hopefully right as you can see that's got it off so 
one washer. This, this is obviously the, this is obviously the bolt or the banjo bolt off of the rear brake with two outlets for both the pipes to be on. This is a single. So we're going to use this single one just to connect the rear pipe up. Obviously a copper washer on top, a copper washer on bottom. This is the pipe that goes um, to the rear cylinder. So all we've got to do is push that through there, like so, and then try and get that started in the cylinder carefully. Obviously you don't want to cross thread anything at this stage. Um, But do it up nice and tight, not stupid tight because the banjos do break, they're not the strongest of things. But just do it up enough to compress the washers, it's nice and tight. Right in a minute, we'll do away with that. But there you go, so that technically now has unlinked the brakes. Um, so that rear cylinder now literally just goes to the rear caliper, so that is sort of done. All we've got to do now is um, obviously bleed the rear brake and um, do away with all the pipes for the link brake system take all the bracketry off and whatnot and blank off the front one so let's crack on with that right here we go we're going to bleed the rear brake um so obviously just push the, the pedal down by hand the fluid reservoir is really small so, as you can see it's got a guard on it to stop you undoing the top of it when you don't need to Take that off, there's a rubber bung in there, be sucked down. You need to put that rubber bung back to its right, correct shape, you can do just by pushing it around. Push it back into the lid. Just got the neat, the, got the brake bleed nipple just cracked off, just a little bit. Just to enough to let some fluid through, but not let it suck itself back in all the time. Obviously I'm doing this on my own, trying to video it hold everything in one go, it's quite complicated. So all you keep doing is just try and pump it till there's hardly any air coming out. Right. Just got to top the fluid up again, hang on. This is just general dot four fluid. So it's coming out of a genuine Mercedes can, but it's only because we've had it in stock. So I run a garage normally as well in between doing all this. sure if you can see that on camera but there's no bubbles coming out through here now so that in theory should be bled. Um, top the fluid up um, and then just see what it feels like so that still feels rock hard so that will do just make sure you have done that up just give it a little crack and then giving a wipe off because brake fluid is very corrosive it will take all the paint off of whatever it touches um, put your little rubber dust cap just clean all this off where uh, we've um, leaked fluid out of the mask cylinder right there you go that is the rear brake put to just op operate in the rear brake so that is the CBS system combined braking system uh, disarmed as such. Um, obviously now all we've got to do is put this reservoir back on here. Um, I will put the cap back on it so you have to unbolt it to do it because you can't um, you can't top it up in there anyway unless you've got a really thin funnel or something but it's just easier just to un unbolt it and do it. So just nip that up quick. Just nip that up. That needs to be too tight. That's fine, that's all back on there. Right, now all we need to do is start taking this off. I'm not sure how well this is coming through on the camera, but obviously this is the pipe we don't no, we are no longer using. Sorry, if I can speak properly. This is a pipe we're no longer using. So we need to disconnect this. So this bracket here is just literally bent around it to keep it nice. So if we do that, um, and what we do at the moment is push it down under the bottom of the bike into the drain tray, which I don't know if you can see the drain tray, but there's a drain tray under there. Um, just to make sure it's empty and then what we'll do is just bend this clamp back round that it has to double round it a little bit because it's obviously meant to you hold two pipes but now it's only holding one 
Right, and again on the front, obviously this is the pipe that did come from the rear, so we don't need that anymore. So do away with that a minute. And there's another one, just to show you that one in a second. So take that out of there, we don't need that one. This one can come out of here. And then uh, you're going to have to bend that one out. Um, what we're going to do here is just prise this bracket open a little bit just so we can get this pipe out that we don't need anymore. Try and keep it into the drain into the drain bucket. Um, not that it seems to be leaking anything, but then what we'll do is we we'll re-pipe the, the front one. Move that, move that one down slightly. And then, I'll tell you what I think what we'll do actually, is we'll move that up and put it into there like so and then that will just that one there we'll keep it away from there that looks all right right as you can see this pipe comes up through here and then disappears through into the engine bay there um, engine bay used to working on cars um through the frame shall we say so we cut that cable tie there makes this all become slack um, and then it comes around this side there's a bracket here there's a bracket just here that is holding the pipe um, what we'll do is we'll whip that off um, and do the bolt back up um, just we don't need that bracket it's just going to be it just be an empty bracket so as you can see bolt that holds the oil cooler in oh, well you can see that on there but um, it's, it looks a bit like that it doesn't look a bit like that it looks like that um, nice bracket, we don't need that. We keep it because might use it for other things. Put this bolt back in for the oil cooler. Don't have to go stupid tight on this, just enough to obviously keep it in place. I'm only using quarter drive tools. Right, so that is now completely free. This pipe's completely free to go down through the frame. Um, let's try and pull that round from the other side. Right, so we're just pulling the pipe out now from the front, which goes right around the front. Um, Sorry, just hit the camera, it is right up in here. Um, right, right up in there, there is a tie, tie wrap. Holding it in, which I can actually get from this side. Um, and it's actually holding, it's only holding that brake pipe, so it doesn't need to be go back on. Um, let me just turn the handlebar slightly. So this tie wrap here is literally just holding the um, the brake pipe on um, which we're going to take away so rather than try and undo it we are just going to cut it looks like it is one you could probably undo and put back together but can't get my hands in there to do that so I just need to get that cable tie out it's disappeared um, where is it there it is so do away with that straighten the bin Right, this is obviously the pipe we're just pulling through. Probably help to feed it from both sides so it don't splash around so much because obviously it did have brake fluid in it. It's got to straighten the handlebars up a bit, give me a bit more room. Um, this obviously has still got some brake fluid in it. Um, but that's why we drained it out first to try and keep most of it out. So, right. Put that back in the bucket just in case there is any residue. So that's got it out to here. See, and then here, I'll just turn you slightly. And again, you can't really see the details. But these two bolts here hold on the combined braking system unit. Now, um, I think the easiest way to undo this is to probably undo this and drop it down out of here with everything connected. So let's um, see how that goes. Now in this situation, I've got a spanner that will probably be quite good for this because I've got a spanner that's got a wobbly socket head on it. It's nice and small for getting into places like this. So um, this is quite tricky. But there you go, that's on one side of it. I just knocked it off. And a little bit of time because the um, camera's right in the wrong place. The camera's actually really awkward. Right, 
Well, that's one off. Um, now this one is a little bit awkward, but just got to get it on it just enough to hold it. There you go. That's on there. You can probably do this without that spanner with a um, cranked head, um, but I've got it, so I'm going to use it. That should drop down enough to pull that out of there. Um, we may have to take the pipes off, but hopefully we'll be able to thread it down and get the pipes out. So let's do the front pipe. Oops, let's do the front pipe first. I probably could use this black pipe here to make the caliper on the front into a three piston caliper off the front lever but unfortunately it's miles too long um, and these are swaged on end so they're not unfortunately not very easy to um, sort the ends out um, in, in situ as such you need a proper tool for doing that right the back pipe threadles up through there um, one last thing we got to do is round the other side is get the reservoir off so let's just go and do that quickly um, what we need to do is just undo this uh, reservoir here don't need to undo it literally just don't need to undo this bolt as you can see weren't tight again just using quarter drive stuff on this um, keep hold of all the nuts bolts and brackets and whatnot because uh, they are useful now I don't know if it's going to come out of there we might have to undo this from the other end that could be a pain no nope, I can get it out so that should go through that hole there as well um, obviously the less you can undo on the bike makes it a lot neater um, and easier don't get brake fluid everywhere brake fluid is corrosive if you don't want it on anything really so um, let's go back around the other side so as I said everything is now disconnected I used to bolt on there you saw me undoing the bolts we should be able to just Spread everything out, pull it all out, and there you go. That's right, I'm going to put the bolt back in here um, because I think that will make it look a little bit neater rather than just having a random bolt missing out of the hole. Like the bolt's not actually doing anything, it just stops you being able to see an empty hole. Um, so, right, let's go to the front caliper. Right, the last thing to do here um, is push the middle piston back on this system um, and then we need to find a blanking bolt for that which is a 10 by 1.25 thread by looks of things. I know it's the same thread because I've used that thingy. Um, so we've got, we've got our drain tray, so we're going to whip the caliper off, just take it right off and use a screwdriver or to push it back. I believe a six mil. Yes, they are. Just don't need the extension, do we? These should have locked tight on them, I believe. So. Will that come out of there? No, it won't. Well, that's just annoying. The wheel's so small, it doesn't come off. Even with a little bit of uh, persuasion against the wheel. Obviously, you don't want to damage the wheel here. But... There you go, it does come out just. So, uh... right, so undo this pin at the bottom, which is the pin that holds the pads in. Stop hitting that against the disc, it's annoying. Right, they're sprung loaded. So that's the pin out. Brake shoe uh, brake pad out, sorry, brake pad out. Right, there you can see. There you can see it's got three pistons. Now, bottom two as we've said. Uh, sorry outside two front brake this one works off the rear brake so at the moment all we're going to do is push that one back which 
probably be able to do by hand. Yeah, we can. We'll push that back all the way in. Just it's got no chance of holding the front brake on at all. Um, but obviously let the fluid out into a drain tray. Now what we should do is just put it back together. Um, and all we need to do is blank off this hole here at the moment. But eventually, well not eventually, the next job will be to join these two together. But we'll need to uh, just see what I've got in stock for that and go from there. So at the moment we're just going to put the caliper back on and put it all back together. Right, let's start again. What we're going to do here is obviously put it all back together. As you can see, that's where the calipers, uh, pistons went. Sorry, so that's the first one in. Um, I am going to put a little bit of grease on each end, just on the in the pinhole, and a little bit like that, just on the back surface, just stops them rattling and squeaking, commonly. So good, I've lost the pin. There it is. Right, so that sits in there like that in the groove. And then just again dab a little copper slip on that because it just stops them squeaking right that holds that in you get the other pad which sits on that round pin again grease it up on the surfaces that touch the pin hole we don't have to worry about so much because we've greased the pin a little bit of grease on the back oops and then see makes it a bit messier putting it back together but put that in there like that push it down to a Keep the spring down by hand and then push the pin through. Once you've got it started, that'll hold the, the pads together. So we just um, we'll leave that like that because we'll do that up properly when the caliper's bolted back on um, because it'd be easier. Now, um, all we need to do is just push them pistons apart. I should have pushed the other pistons back in while I was there, really. But it doesn't matter. We can use a screwdriver to do that. It's a bit easier when we're using the pads to do it. I should have just pushed all... If you'd done that to start with, look. If you'd just gone like that to start with, we could have pushed all three pistons back together. And it wouldn't have mattered. Right, so. Um, try and get this on here without... I haven't got any Loctite here at the minute, so I'm going to put this back together just so I can give it a quick test down the track and use um, one brake. Um, the brake will work, just needs just a bit, a bit of Loctite put on that at some point. Before we go tearing around the countryside on it, not we're going to be using it for too much, we're using it as a fun bike really. My bike has purely been brought as a stunt project. So there you go. Um, obviously, we got to do always remember this when you've had any break apart, whether you've bled it or not. But always, always remember to just push the front brake three or four times. You don't need to go too mad. Just three or four times because that pushes the pads back against the disc and clamps it. What happens is obviously when you push the pistons back to get it on there, there's a gap there and the first time you go for the brake, you pull the brake but the caliper, the pistons and pads only move that much and it doesn't slow you down, it gives you a heart attack. Literally does give you a heart attack. <coughs> so what you need to do is pump that pad out, pump the thing out just by pumping the brake lever three or four times and that gets it where it should be. Right, so that is the linked brake system disconnected. All we've got to do is um, get a blanking bolt for that front caliper. But as I say, I'm only literally going to run it down the uh, workshops on a farm. We're going to run it down the farm track and back to the road <coughs> just to uh, just to try it out. See. If right, welcome back. We're just going to put a little uh, link pipe in now to uh, join this third piston, so it works off the front brake. Um, we've made this off camera. Um, make that up ourselves you can buy them at any length off of various places on the internet if you research it um, at the moment we're just going to cable tie the front lever back in a little bit if you keep pressure on it although it makes a little bit of a mess you keep pressure on it it stops it all gravity bleeding out gravity dropping out um, so what we're going to do now is join this pipe to the here using the original um, double banjo bolt some new banjos which obviously we made this little pipe up and new washers and whatnot so uh, we're going to go ahead and undo this put the new pipe in put this bolt down here and this bolt the double banjo in here join the two banjos together now obviously what you can do is um obviously just put a blanking bolt in there 
and just use the outside two pistons but because I'm building this into a stunt bike I want all three pistons to work to try and get a bit better brake um, brake works fine as it is um, it's more of an experiment to see what it works like that so if you want to um, follow the beginning of the video and just strip all the CBS off and just put a blanking plug in there um, once again the threads 10 by 1.25 you just put a blanking plug in there um, that would work fine the bike stopped as it does um, I'm just going that one step further and trying to join it all together uh, which we're going to go ahead and do now some sort of drain sort of container under it because we are going to make a bit of a mess now this is going to squirt pressure out of here because I pressurised it before we pressurised it before I've done it but the reason I've done that is because it will make less mess in the long run so we're going to do crack it off slowly just to let the pressure out there you go a little bit of pressure seeps out then it should stop dripping right sorry about the interruption so uh, we've got the pipe made up we are we've got this up done um, that's where we was wasn't it so we've got this undone so take this union out of here uh, bolt sorry banjo bolt um, as I said we're going to use the original bolt from the rear caliper so we're going to put a copper washer on there sorry, hang on copper washer on there then um, our new bit of pipe another copper washer through that banjo and a copper washer so let's, let's screw that in there to start with just to hold everything in line um, just nip that up because uh, if you're not careful if, you, if it's only in a couple of threads you could when you're moving it about pull the threads out of the caliper so just be a little bit careful with that um, original banjo single banjo bolt, two copper washers, one either side, that's in there, <coughs> sorry that's in there, we will probably at some point do another video on changing all the pipes front and rear to braided and if we do do that we will change this here and just have a double union here so you don't need to use a double bolt at the moment mainly because I want to test it I want to see how much better it works with a third piston working um, and whether it's actually worth doing it or not really it might not actually really make that much difference um, so that'd be interesting to see obviously I've tested it already so I know what it breaks like at the moment um, Got to hold them still while you nip it up. Right, now we've got to do is uh, bleed it. Put the pipe on, crack it open, top the fluid up as well, keep the fluid topped up. Whoops, hang on, I just walked into the camera, so let's try and sort that out. Well, as you can see it's starting to gravity bleed itself now without even pushing the lever um, which is quite often the case so just give it a few pumps nice and easy pumps don't go too mad you see the air bubbles coming out basically keep going until you get no bubbles it might take a little while As you can see there's pretty much no bubbles coming through there. Um, just pumping the lever again, a couple more will come out. We're getting there. See?
Right, keep the lever in all the way when you do the bleed nipple up. Just nip it up for now, just a little nip. Right, obviously now the piston's all the way back because we pushed that back earlier. So what we've got to do is push the piston out. I'm just topping the fluid up before I do that. Just realise you can't see much of that. So now we'll start that again. We're bleeding the top piston, which is the normal front brake system. Pumping it again, waiting for no air to come out of here. Again, just be careful that you don't run out of fluid up the top because if you do run out of fluid, you have to start everything all over again. It is very annoying. Right, as you can see, no air bubbles, so we're going to say that's bled. Nip that up and then see what it, see what it feels like. Right, that feels nice and hard. I think that's good. Um, it's quite often worth when you bleed a brake to get it sort of working like we have. Um, it feels pretty good, but it's quite often worth just giving it a run up and down the yard, track, whatever. Just give it a little run. It bounces the fluid around. All the little bounces makes all the air come up to the top. So go and do like a mile on it. Come back and bleed it a bit more, and you'll probably get a bit more air out. But that does feel pretty good like that. So just a quick recap, as I say what we've done, joined the middle piston to the outside two pistons using this little bit of braided bit of hose, obviously check for leaks, check everything's tight, clean everything off, um, and there it is, that is how you unlink your Benelli 125 uh, custom, uh, custom, combined braking system, CBS system on a Benelli 125. Um, thanks for watching, there will be some more videos following of uh, different things, subframes, uh, different exhausts, paint jobs, uh, handlebars, handlebar grips, uh, tail tidy, lots of things coming. We're probably going to try and video most of the things we do to this bike and video our progress in learning to stunt it. Um, so thanks for watching, um, click subscribe if you would like to and um, see you in the next video.